Elvis is in the building and the girls swoon. Oh, he's hot. <laughs> We can't wait to see you. He's the only man that I know that makes my heart beat. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'm an Elvis tribute artist. You know, I've been an Elvis fan ever since I've been three years old. People used to use impersonator, but now they, they like tribute artists better. It just sounds better. <laughs> Tonight is, uh, I do this show uh, every year for them. It's uh, kind of like a nursing home. And I perform for them, and I, you know, I bring the scarves out and put it around these people. And then he would take a scarf that he had put on his shoulders, and he would take them off and just sing it with um, like, and present you a scarf. And the next talk of the season was, he gave me a scarf. No, he gave me a scarf. Do you have a red one or a white one or a gold one? They recognize me every year when I come back. It's like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I was waiting to see you. Uh, when I don't see them, I get worried because I wonder what happened to them. But uh, most of the time, the same people are still there. And they kept their scarf from last year. And they're going to show me and say, I still have your scarf from last year. And it's, it's a great feeling. You know? 101. <laughs> you got plenty more. You got plenty more in you. I can tell. You don't change. I love his style. It's his vibe. The way he plays music. That gives you hot happy. I remember the first time I saw him, and he comes flying through there singing, and it was just awesome. It takes a lot of nerve to go out there in front of a stage and try to impersonate the best performer in the world. You gotta have the looks, you gotta have the moves, you gotta have the vocals. I'm very shy, so to start off being on the stage was really, really difficult for me, but I started doing those karaoke things, and then I, uh, somebody said one night, oh, you're very good at what you do, man. You, maybe you should do you know, an Elvis tribute. So then I ordered a jumpsuit and started doing little private parties. The next thing you know, I was, I was booked uh, you know, all the time doing shows. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. The hair. <laughs> the hair is the toughest thing for me because I have really curly hair. It could take me an hour to get my hair done right. And I, and I don't want to wear a wig. If my hair is right, I can almost tell you I'm going to sing perfect. The hair's good tonight. I think I'm feeling pretty good with it tonight. Yes. I saw the real Elvis in 1955 at Sarasota, Florida, and he looks just as good. <laughs> I was never allowed to watch Elvis because he gyrated and were Catholic, and I, I never re really a fan of Elvis, but now that I've gotten to know his songs and all, well, honey, my socks have been off ever since he came. Come on, you go. Uh -huh. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, yeah. In the daytime, I'm, I'm David Moore, and I'm the regular guy. Everybody knows me as the guy who goes out there, I got a cap on, you know, I play tennis. Not for one second I'm going to think I'm Elvis Presley, only when I'm on that stage. I have to perform as Elvis and try to bring that out. But off the stage, I'm a regular guy, you know, I'm just everybody else. I'm a big, big Elvis fan. I've been collecting stuff since I was a little kid. And uh, everywhere I go, if I find something that pertains to Elvis, I have to get it. We have Elvis plates, Elvis statues, decanters, uh, cars. Uh, this room's getting too small. So the next step would be buying a bigger house. I would have to sing a lot more, obviously. But <laughs> love Elvis, love his music, and um, try to keep his memories alive through my shows.